Hey guys, it's Martin from MW Sculpts. It's been a while since the last video, but I've been busy creating some more terrain and these beastmen for the game Mordheim. The warband is filling out now, but we still need to replace these placeholder minis I've been using for mutants. Let's dive into Blender and make it happen. I've made some great progress on the Claude mutant. We will focus on creating the second mutant with the scorpion tail. We can use many of the existing objects from the first mutant to visualize how we want this guy to look. Having a separate symmetrical object for the chest is a great way to keep things in line, at least at first, as this area does not move or twist as much as the lower part of the torso. Once we have the old arm in place, let's quickly create a few spheres to create a new one. I created a little add-on for Blender to help you do actions like this in convenient pie menus so you can spend more time sculpting. Check out the video all about it for more information. I like the idea of these mutants being quite feral, so I'm going for poses where they are crouched down, sort of crawling, to look a bit more animalistic. Grabbing some more parts such as the sword and shield from the existing beastmen, a head and a scorpion tail I sketched out we can start to see this mutant take shape. There is still some work to do on this pose, so all these new objects can flow nicely together. Most of the time while posing, I'm focusing on the front view. This is because when rendering out and getting an image of your creation, most people will see only one view, so you want that to be as appealing as possible. With the left arm, I'm really liking this C-curve shape. So while shaping the objects, I will keep this in mind, so that the arm flows in that direction. A great tip for arms is to treat them like a chain link and have the shoulder, bicep and forearm descend in width. I'm sketching in some initial shapes for the shoulder and bicep and forearm here using the snake up brush, uh, draw sharp and clay strips. Using a smaller clay strips brush here to create the, the box like shape of the wrist. To add a bit more interest to the face, we could control shift drag out a mask on the jaw. Keep in mind that it moves down and back on a hinge here, not straight down. Then we can add a tongue and some teeth for a more beastly look. Control shift and dragging out a mask is great for separating things like the eyebrows on this face. This way you can move certain parts of an object without affecting the other areas. With the snake hook brush here, I'm using it to twist out this thigh to give it a little more interest. While using draw sharp on organic shapes like this, try using the smooth brush straight after to make things look a little more natural. Using shift D here on the chest object, I'm using snake hook to pull this into more of a rib cage like shape. Most of the segments for this scorpion tail are linked duplicate objects. You can achieve this by using Alt and D when duplicating each object. So now when I make changes to one of the segments, it will be reflected on all the others. Changing the pivot point on the fly in sculpt mode can be a real time saver while working on objects like this finger. Be sure to check out the little video I created centered around this method. The shield is resting nicely on the back of the character, but just to be sure that all of the mesh is intersecting with the back, I'm using the mask brush and then moving that part of the mesh in towards the back. This will help while 3D printing later on. The neck is certainly not a focal point of this sculpt, but getting the main shapes looking right is important too. The scorpion tail is looking a little plain, so if we come in with draw sharp and the clay strips brush, we can start to dig in around some of the shapes and uh, using smooth a little bit as well on the inside to give things more pattern and texture. 
I have the four fingers here set up as link duplicates as well. And uh, this was saving a lot of time. I've just got them rotated in different positions and slightly smaller for the smaller fingers. Getting some of the tertiary shapes in now, I've got a couple of little objects representing boils and spots for the mutants. And I'm just positioning those uh, randomly around the body. Using mask slice and fill holes on a duplicate of the thumb. I'm just taking the tip of the object and I can use this as the big toe nail. Bringing in another collection of objects from the Beastmen. It's just something to place around the waist. And uh, sharing shapes like this across a warband of units just ties them all together and makes them look part of the same squad. Selecting several objects and hitting the forward slash is a great way to focus in on, on a few different objects, uh, especially when you're working on something with the waist like this. Just allows you to see how it's meeting the torso uh, without all the other objects getting in the way. Once I'm mostly happy with the face, then I can turn off symmetry and then start to make adjustments to add a bit of asymmetry there. And this will just make the face look a little bit more lifelike and give it a bit more motion as well. Going through some of the objects now on both the mutants, where the resolution might have been a little bit too low. So I'm just increasing that and polishing off some of the uh, remaining objects. And here's some finished renders of our mutant. This guy should print nicely on my 2K printer at about 22mm from head to foot as the shapes are simple and clean. You can pick him up for yourself on my Gumroad. If you enjoy creating little things for 3D print too, you might like to check out our Discord in the description below to chat sculpting, minis and 3D printing. Don't forget you can support the channel on my Patreon too, just like these guys did. See you all in the next video.